People of Earth, good evening. We are today, March 18, 2024. Here are the developments of the current galactic events impacting the future of Earth as a planetary civilization. And I am delighted to welcome you for this 22nd episode of Star Nation News. High Commander Thorhan Eredion from the Galactic Federation of Worlds battleship Excelsior reports that the moon of Earth, Luna, has now interfaced with the consciousness of the beings contained in the 17 pods retrieved to the core drive of the vessel. This doesn't imply an immediate action, but some technologies may start to activate within the planetoid. He reminds you that Earth Moon was brought into this star system by a very ancient civilization. It is a natural planetoid that was hollowed out and fitted with artificial structures. Its core was equipped with a drive mechanism that is similar to very ancient technologies, such as certain fatal cultures, as well as the Anachim. It uses a living organic plasmic supraconsciousness that is invited to embody the central core drive. It will not only power it, but also navigate it through space, receiving orders from the crew members of the ship. These particular types of species live in the ether of space as a plasmic state. They experience a very different measure of time in a non-linear way. They have the possibility to interface with technology or incarnate into specific solid avatars that have been genetically prepared to receive their huge and powerful morphogenetic structure. These beings are the most advanced life forms known to exist. The three best examples we can refer to are the nine supreme stage of evolution, link between source creator and the created. They look like gigantic space protozoa, and they are made of a complex structure. The nine reside in the great void in between the universes. To better understand what the creation looks like, we can contemplate the very famous and anciently known symbol of the flower of life. This geometrical pattern represents the multiverse. Not to be understood as a flat representation, but multidimensional. Each circle is in truth a bubble, and each bubble is a dimensional universe, where bubbles overlap are connections between dimensions and universes. We will find in these zones wormholes and stargates to these adjacent universes. The great void is the space that remains between the bubbles. In this void, it is omni-existent. It means it does not abide by laws of physical space. Within the bubbles where gravity exists, time can be perceived sometimes and linear, but in the void it is not. Same regarding linearity and non-linearity of space. The second best example is a species member of the Cedars group, the O. They are originally from the galaxy Andromeda, the same density as the nine, but not dwelling in the great void. 
their plasmic structure is crystallized in geometric patterns of light. They are interfaced collective consciousness, meaning they are all connected wherever they are and whatever the distance, using the lattice network of space. Same as in a forest on Earth. You can imagine the trees communicating with each other via a fungus network. Well, for the O, it is similar, but using the lattice of the space continuum instead. They communicate with each other in a way not yet understood or experienced by humans. Our third example is a great man named David Adair, recently interviewed by Dr. Michael Sala in a historical series of videos. Mr. Adair, while working in Area, area 51, was put in contact with such a being in a retrieved extraterrestrial spaceship. The name of this being was Pitholem, and it she was occupying the core drive of the ship, exactly the same as the being in the core drive of Earth Moon. As she made contact with Mr. Adair, Bethlehem transferred herself into his consciousness field and attached to him. It is here obvious to understand that a link beyond space and time already existed between them. Otherwise, this could have never happened with a random Earth human. Pitholem told David that she was part of a collective of plasmic consciousnesses living in space and that her kind was on the way to the soul system as a big group. This information she told him way before the fleet of the Intergalactic Confederation and the Cedars arrived into our star system in November 2021. I can speculate that Pitholem may as well be part of the O, but nothing yet has accurately confirmed it. Kahel Governor Valnek on Achorat is reporting this week that the Ahori government has officially broken all ties with the Sikar Empire, but will still maintain close ties with the Aldebaran Dark Fleet via their detachment on planet Marhat. Valnek also confirms that the Earth US Air Force space program colony has started packing up and began the process of leaving Marhat to go back to Earth. We need to realize that for decades, the secret space programs have sent personnel on other worlds, either on conquered worlds or in agreements of interest with some local cultures. The two main hubs for these black program colonies are the Altair and the Aldebaran star systems. But the Centaurian systems also host Earth colonies from positive space programs, different. When he used to work as an officer for the Galactic Federation of Worlds into our solar system, Valnek was in charge of the threat of technical material for the positive off-world Earth colonies, mainly working with the Earth Alliance on supplying Earth Moon facilities with extraterrestrial technologies. Since he was transferred to the Altair star system in the end of the year 2021, Valdek has now a much more exciting job as governor of a Galactic Federation of Worlds colony in the mouth of the Ahorian corporate territory. It is a true blessing to be able to receive regular news from this sensitive part of the galaxy.
this week to end this broadcast beautifully, I asked my dear old friend, Ia, if he would be willing to graciously share for you his precious words of wisdom. The universe is astoundingly alive, filled with an abundance of existences. Note all worlds support organic life forms, but every planet, every star is animated with sentience at many different levels of consciousness. Through space and time, all life forms are embodied with consciousness. But not all of them see the universal awareness of their nature and full potential. Yet, everything in the universe is on the curve of an evolutionary process. Everything grows, exults, and reforms. Everything is cycles. Time is made of cycles. The cycles of time are not set on a linear pattern they are not even circular. They are spherical. Cycles are complex moving curves that run through these spheres, always ending by connecting end to start, like infinitely reforming letters of an invisible alphabet. They are the pathway, and they are, at the same time, the whole at once. Time is sentient. It has an intelligence. To step out of the limitations of linear time, your consciousness has to jump out of your confining biological incarnation avatar. Once you step out of linear time, you grasp the full understanding of what time and its cycles are. Now let us talk about love. Love is the frequency that binds all things in the creation. Love binds not only matter, but also consciousness to the source creator and hearts to each other. When you love someone and that love resonates in reciprocity, that primordial universal frequency binds your hearts together. In this state of pure beauty and bliss, you vibrate at a speed beyond light. You experience the primal emotion of the Creator. You desire to share this love and you radiate it to the infinity of your universe. You are becoming one and whole with the universe. And the universal creation. To be in love is to vibrate at the speed of the original frequency of creation. You are one with the Creator. I am in love with Ki, 
I can feel her heart beating and her consciousness pulsing. I understand her thoughts and feelings. To be in love is to share a mutual frequency that entangles us with the heart of the Creator. Loving is a one-way arrow shot into the heart of the recipient. Loving is making a connection. To be in love is to share that connection. For the frequency of love, like all frequencies, is resonant entanglement. You love this world. You give it healing and uplifting vibrations. You are in love with this world, you can hear its heart beating. Sometimes, you are in love with a being that does not resonate the love connection back to you. Then, pain comes. Pain is a disharmony of frequencies experienced between two people when an entanglement is dissonant. The mysteries of love are easy to understand by experiencing it yourself. You can only truly understand what you experience for yourself. This connection is called frequency entanglement. Walk barefoot on this planet. Breathe the air fully. Unravel your hair in the starry sky. Dance boundlessly the path of life you have chosen. I am here. I have never forgotten you, humanity of Ki. How beautiful are these words from dear Io, Prince of the Anna Empire. But this is a, just a title, a social title, is, and responsibility is bearing. Ia is a loving man. He comes from another world and is just someone different who has undergone a great transformation to become an immortal and a cosmic alchemist. He knows the heart of creator and he loves sharing it with all beings. Regarding the news this week in this Star Nation News episode, I would like to just only um, go back to the information about the moon. We have been covering for a few weeks now with the retrieval of the pods of the 17 crew members of this ship. The moon has been the object of worship and adoration for millennia and more than this, since men became aware of their connection to the skies, to nature. They seen the moon as something weird. 
when it arrives because arrived because it wasn't always there. They regarded it, not understanding what it was, as a blessing, a goddess or god regarding certain cultures. And always something amazing that you do not understand the nature of you. If you are part of a primitive culture, you're going to adore or worship this thing. Realizing that this thing had an effect on gravity pull on Earth, tides. So because the moon, before humans were able to explain why, because the moon has this gravity pull, like all celestial bodies have a gravity pull on Earth. What is pulling? Of course, a little bit of the, the solid ground, but not that much. It cannot really lift the ground. But what it is pulling is all the fluids, which are more easy to, to, to move. So every time, once in 27 days, the moon is going to pull out more. You will have Big, bigger tides, but this is she's doing it every day as is she goes around the earth. She is the, at the origin of the phenomenon of the tides. So imagine what she's doing on the sea. <coughs> Sorry, she's doing also on all other fluids. The plants, the fluids in the, the sap of the plants the blood and the fluids in human beings and animals. And women have this cycle, menstrual cycle, that is not linked to the moon, it's linked to the mammal nature of beings. All mammals have these females on Terra, Earth, key have these cycles, menstrual cycles, which is due to the ovulation for the fertility. And when the moon comes into action, it's going to influence these fluids, these fluid movements, and it's going to be more intense at that moment. And many women have tendency to attune to the cycles of the moon. This has made of the moon the goddess of femininity, women, or fertility, whatever cultures you are looking at. This was before we understood what the moon was. People would put their crystals on the window, and the, the light, the sunlight reflecting on the surface of the moon, bouncing back at Earth, would have an influence on quartz, because light has always an influence on quartz. This is a fact. So now we know that the moon is a planetoid. It's not a goddess. It's not an entity. It's a planetoid that's been brought into our star system by ancient civilizations. And it is all hollowed out and carved out, filled with facilities, factories, uh, spaceports, a lot of things, habitat. And in the center of it, there's a core center that is that was hermetic for a very long time. And the cold Assi just gave the teleport keys to this, uh, this core. And in the core, besides the fact that they found, a crew was found in its vicinity last year, two years ago even, uh, these famous pods, in the core was discovered recently a mechanism, the core drive of the vessel that was, had been installed there. And this core drive utilizes an entity that is an extraterrestrial entity that is not from here. And this extraterrestrial entity is an organic consciousness, an organic soul, a being, a real being, but it, that is not incarnated. It is just a plasmic being. Working as would work the AI 
central computer of a ship. This extraterrestrial is not a goddess, is not to be worshipped, it is there. This extraterrestrial entity has no, no influence on Earth. The physical planetoid moon, Luna, has by the gravity pull, but this being inside of the moon has no interaction with humans on Earth. This being is there, out of time, out of linear time, ready to release technology or make devices work, activate devices, whatever it will do, asked by the crew. But in no way I recommend to worship this being. There is no goddess moon. There is only a planetoid carved as a spaceship and which core drive mechanism is powered by an extraterrestrial supraplasmic being. This time we move from these old beliefs of worshipping things. Knowledge is power, but knowledge is also sovereignty and moving forward. So we are very grateful that all these informations are coming out and I will see you next week, next Monday, for new Star Nation News.